Right now, the day's biggest news stories from a Vegas perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take on a Thursday, rolling into hour number two. And we got some breaking news here that we need to discuss, and it's local news. We spoke a little bit about this yesterday. It is the story of a man, 50-year-old Byron Williams, who died in police custody. If you don't recall this story, I will remind you very quickly here. Uh, Williams was riding his bike on the early morning of September 5th when officers tried to confront him about not having a light on the bicycle. Now, body camera video shows that Williams ran from police. That is Huge mistake, number one. He ran from police. Officers chased him down. They did find drugs in his system, but they pinned him down to the ground. While being handcuffed, Williams repeatedly said, I couldn't breathe. Does that remind you of somebody? Eric Garner. While saying he couldn't breathe and while taking him into custody, when they found the drugs, they stood him up and his body went limp limp, and he died. And now, this morning, Metro Police are saying, that uh, the coroner has ruled this as a homicide. Now, this is important. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a determination of criminal activity or wrongdoing, but certainly it is a case for the family members and attorneys that are representing Byron Lee Williams. But again, let's start from square one because I talk about this all the time. In these types of situations, whether it is an officer-involved shooting Even in the Eric Garner situation, which was horrible, horrible. And I'm not condoning what that officer did in the Eric Garner case. I'm not condoning that chokehold. It was wrong. And that officer probably should have gone to jail. But with that being said, it seems like 99% of these cases, I don't care what the color of your skin is, 99% of these cases are non-compliance. Doesn't mean I'm saying the officers are always right. This is non-compliance, okay? Did this guy deserve to die? Absolutely not. We don't know exactly all the details of this case, but we do know he ran from the police, didn't he? And the excuse I get from many people, including African Americans, are we are scared of police. We're scared. It's an instinct. That's why we run. That is a poor excuse. If a cop is right or wrong, you absolutely 100% need to comply. Why is it so hard for people to understand that? Does compliance only apply to running or does it it apply to being asked questions and answering the questions that are asked of you, even if they incriminate yourself? Well, the first thing I say when I talk about, first of all, if somebody's not answering a question, I can't recall a case where he was shot dead because he wasn't answering a question. What I'm talking about is running from police, right. attacking a police officer, that's, swearing that, or screaming at a police officer. That's you clearly, can't do stuff like that. That's clearly noncompliance. But I was actually involved in a situation myself about five years ago back in Omaha, Nebraska, where I was in a vehicle, and the vehicle was, uh, the driver was not very sober, and he was driving down, uh, I, I, it, it was the wrong It was the, the wrong street, it was a street he shouldn't be driving down, and he almost crashed the car, and I got out of the car. So did everybody else, and the officer started asking me questions, and I did not answer those questions. Because, you don't have to answer questions. Well, but the because, law says because, you don't because, have to. Because I felt like it would incriminate the driver of the car as well yeah. as myself. You don't have to. And the officers tried to put me in a type of situation. They, they basically assaulted me. Um, and I had to say that well, I can't breathe because I, I, think- I couldn't breathe at the time. But to them... Me not answering those questions was considered non-compliance. Well, that, that's, a, and that's I didn't, ridiculous. I didn't run from anybody. Listen, my, my, my hands were in the air. It was a totally different situation. Okay, but, no, I, I, so I, in those circumstances, is that considered non-compliance when, when you refuse no, to incriminate no, yourself or someone no, that you're with? No, because you're abiding by the law. Exactly. I'm talking about people that do not abide by the but, law. But they operate, in this case, running from police, that's a completely but, different circumstance. But they operated as if I did run from the well, police. Well, then that's wrong. Then they're morons, I, and they shouldn't I, be police I, officers. I completely agree. Um, I'm going to take some phone calls on this at 257-5396, but before I do, I want to share my story, too. Uh, I was on a date, okay? I was following somebody to a sushi restaurant. This was on Spring Mountain Road. This happened about seven, eight years ago. I'm pulled over by a police officer. My date, who I just met, is right in front of me. She pulls over, too. I'm like, oh, did I, did, was I driving too fast? I didn't think I was. He says, get out of the car, the police officer. I said, officer, what did I do? He says, get the hell out of the car. Uh, I complied. I probably shouldn't have uh, in that situation, but I complied. I get out of the car. He puts me up against the car. 
handcuffs me. And I said, what is going on here, officer? Why are you putting handcuffs on me? He doesn't answer me. I'm handcuffed. Then about 10 minutes later, he uncuffs me and he says, oh, we had reason to believe your car was stolen. Now, if I resisted arrest, that could have ended very badly for me. I didn't resist arrest. I kept my cool, even though I didn't want to. He told my date to leave. She left. I never hung out with her again. (laughs) I mean, maybe that's not the only reason why she didn't hang out with me again, but that's certainly one of the reasons. The point I'm trying to make, and I understand African Americans are going to say, well, you don't know what it's like to be black. You don't know what it's like. And you know what? I don't. But, but, but But I'll say this. Here's what I do know. What I know is if you comply with a police officer, if you don't have drugs on you, if you're not breaking the law, and you comply, and you do what officers tell you to do, you have probably a 50 times better chance of getting out of there unscathed and surviving rather than running from the police or, God forbid, pointing a weapon at a police officer or swearing at a police officer or resisting arrest. Okay? Now, things do happen. People are wrongfully arrested. I get that. You have to comply with the cops. Why is that so hard for people to understand? I feel sorry for this Las Vegas man's family, Byron Williams, who's 50. I'm not saying he deserved to die. But how dumb are you when you run from police? Really, I ask that question to all of you. How dumb are you when you decide to run from a police officer? So let me ask this question to the callers out there. Who's at fault here? Is Byron Williams at fault? He was tackled by police officers, held down, he died. Said he couldn't breathe, he died. Ruled a homicide. Is Byron Williams at fault or is Metro Police at fault? I pose that question to all of you. 257-5396 is the number to call. Again, that number, if you want to be a part of the conversation, is 702-257-5396. Why don't we start off with Frank. Frank, what's going on? What's up, Frank? Um, You you guys, uh, I've been dying for a a segue on on some talk show host. This just happened to my friend. And and I'm 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 livid about it because I I've had I, I I'm I'm out doing my my exercise on my bike, and and, and he stops me for uh, running through the the red hand, and, and the light was green. I said I go officer, do you know your job? I'm, I'm I'm my bike is considered a vehicle. I mean, how did you get your driver's license? But that that's not what I'm you know that one pissed me off. Mm-hmm. And and they they give me the third degree, go through my pockets, my bag, everything. Um, uh, uh, I said that's just a water bag, you know. And I, I go, this is unbelievable. I didn't get a ticket. But uh, last week, my friend, um, he had well, he left, and and he he's not a big partier when it you know comes to to uh, drugs or alcohol. He did have a beer a couple hours ago. Um, evidently, he made uh, an illegal right turn, and this was on a Friday. My other friend was smoking pot in the back. Pot is legal. He uh, takes a breathalyzer, blows goose eggs. The cop takes him to jail. He sits in jail for three days. Mm. And, it, it, and, and here's the most infuriating thing. It, it, it tell, it, the VA it gets six vials of blood back to my doctor in three days. And the VA is not fast. Metro is going to take six months. And here's what I found out from friends. If, if the blood test comes back clean... They're going to lose the blood test, and he's already he's already lawyered up. And when I but it's going to he's got they got to wait six months, and it, it, just what some of these cops get away with. Uh, Listen, Frank, let me interject here real quickly. And by the way, I'm sorry that your friends had to go through that. Oh, it cost okay. him a job too. Yeah, it, it, because he believed like, real, real quick. Right? Yeah, uh, it it, uh, it cost him. Uh, he had, he had filled out and on one of the uh, questions in the interview is, "Have you been arrested?" And he believes in honesty. He said, "Yeah, I just got arrested." And, and, okay, and, let me uh, interject here, Frank. And so he, he didn't get hired because of yeah. that. Frank, let me interject here real quickly. Um, I'm sorry that your friends had to go through that, but it still doesn't change my opinion when it comes to complying with police officers. Now, it's horrible that your friend lost his job. It's horrible that uh, one of your friends had to be in jail for three days for, for, for little reason. But with that being said, would you rather be in jail for three days and lose your job or lose your life? But if you don't comply with police, there is a chance that you could lose your life. And many of these officer-involved shootings, that is exactly what is going on here. When you have these officer-involved shootings, the reason for it is I, is for that reason alone. I, I will say this. In some situations, police officers like to intimidate you and, and, and 
make you think that if that maybe you don't you don't understand the law or or you don't know enough about the law and, and they make you want to you know incriminate your you know, incriminate yourself or answer questions you don't want to answer or do things you don't want to do and if you don't do those things they 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 basically perceive that they they intimidate you to do those but things but it still doesn't change my opinion no, though but if, say for example the story that i just explained roughly 10 5 10 minutes ago what if i was african american what do you think would happen to me under those circumstances i don't know the answer to that question not running from the police just <laughs> refusing to answer questions to if incriminate have, myself if you have and, and the person that was driving the vehicle if you have good police officers that are doing their job exactly. i would imagine they would treat you the same and, way and these obviously were not good police officers well who knows what would have happened then but i can tell you right now if that african american ran from police it would have ended very badly for him but maybe he's had situations where he he knew friends of his that didn't run from the police but just didn't do exactly just, as they wanted it, to do because it, they didn't want to incriminate it, themselves and something bad happened to them here's what i'm tired of okay I'm tired of people rushing to judgment, and I hate to bring up Ferguson again, but the Al Sharptons of the world, the Jesse Jacksons of the world, if it is a white officer that kills an African-American, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people on the left, including Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, seem to think that, oh, race had to be a factor. No, it's not true. Race wasn't a factor in the Ferguson shooting of Michael Brown. Michael Brown attacked that police officer. What do you guys think about this? 257-5396 is the number to call. Again, 702 257 Five three nine six. Our producer Steiny is in studio now. Steiny, what's going on? Just reading up on this Byron Williams breaking news story. One of the things you know we've done um, as a society to try to hold police accountable is to uh, institute the use of body cams. Well, there were body cameras in this case. Now they were turned off immediately after Byron's body went limp, and uh, actually the police uh, addressed that this morning in a press conference. Johnny, do we have this cut? Our policy does allow for the officers to turn the body-worn camera off at the conclusion of a, an incident or other circumstances within our policy that allows that. But we will evaluate the totality of the incident to determine if it was appropriate if they turned them off appropriately or if they were turned off prematurely. But we still have to complete that as part of our investigation. Okay, now that's absurd. Yeah, let, I, let, let's be very clear on this one. That is absurd. I've said it before, and I will say it again. Body cameras need to be on 24-7 for every second of every shift. Not only will it save money to the taxpayer, how will it save money to the taxpayer? For fibulous lawsuits, if the police officers do absolutely nothing wrong, we have the video footage to prove that the officers yeah. acted responsibly. It, it, now, on the other it, side... And it should save money to the police department as well, assuming that the police officers are, are acting within protocol. Right. And on the other side of things, if the officer does do something wrong, guess what? There's no defense for them. Exactly. We have the video evidence. Why the hell would they turn off their body cameras? Well, that That's why it was ruled a homicide, Brian. Yeah. I and, mean, it's and, insane. And it should be under those circumstances. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, but, you know, I don't listen. Officers, there are some bad apples out there. And in those specific situations, I want them convicted. I want them prosecuted to the highest extent of the law. Make no mistake about it. I don't want those people out there on the streets. But gosh, people, every single time we have an officer involved shooting, every single time it involves a white police officer and an African-American, everybody jumps to conclusions, oh, it must have been race. That must have been why. And then when we learn in many of these cases, not only was there noncompliance, but maybe someone pointed a weapon or a gun at an officer. Maybe someone resisted arrest and, and posed a threat to an officer. We don't know all the specifics until they come out. In this specific situation, this is very sad. I feel horrible for Byron Williams. Nobody shot Byron Williams. It appears as though some people were on top of him trying to arrest him so he didn't get away. Guess what? Here's something simple for you. Don't have drugs on your person and don't run from the police when you have drugs on your person. Is that so hard to understand? That man would still be alive today if he didn't run from police. And it, it can probably be assumed that he had a criminal record and, and if he had gotten caught with drugs, he, he knew he would go to jail. And that's, that's why he ran from the police. I think that's a pretty fair I, 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 I assumption. Think, I think that's probably what took place. That is a pretty fair assumption. Now, do I like the fact that police officers went up to him because he had a headlight out? No, I don't like that. But guess what? Don't break the law. That's pretty ticky-tacky. Don't break the law and maybe you would have been cited and wouldn't even be able to go back on your way. Instead, the man is dead. And I, and I get sick and tired you know, of it. And I will say this. As far as the Michael Brown situation, Michael Brown, and this isn't talked about enough, he was 6'4", 300 pounds. He was basically a, an NFL-sized defensive tackle. If he was a Caucasian, 
NFL size defensive tackle and he bum rushed a police officer, he would have gotten shot too. It's one of my, I agree. It's one of my biggest uh, uh, criticisms it, of Barack Obama. It, it, his race had absolutely nothing to do with that situation. It's one of my biggest criticisms of Barack Obama because if you recall, JD, days after uh, that shooting in Ferguson. When Michael Brown's funeral, Barack Obama sent out some people from his administration to go to that funeral. Michael Brown is no hero. He's no hero. He's a vigilante. He was, he, uh, his death was, was leveraged as a pawn. It's a joke. To be honest with you. You want to talk about Garner? That's a different it circumstance. It was like the definition of pandering. And, and Garner, would, he, he, had been, he had been warned and arrested a combination of 27 times for the exact same thing. He was also undercutting the cigarette shops. And price he assaulted for, a woman. For cigarettes. I mean, and, and he had so he, uh, he, domestic he, he, he abuse. Was, he wasn't exactly a model citizen either. Garner was he not. just happened to be. Garner was, Garner was not a saint, also convicted on domestic violence. So, I mean, you know, to say that Garner was this uh, a law-abiding citizen and, is a joke. And, and Did he Garner, deserve to die? Did he deserve to die? No. no. That's and, not what and I'm Garner saying. was also six foot seven, 330 yeah. pounds with a heart condition. Right. Right. 257-5396 is the number to call. 702-257-5396 if you want to jump in. Let's go to Ron. Ron, what's going on? What's up, Ron? Hey, Brian. How you doing? Good. Uh, listen, Brian, uh, even you yourself admitted about uh, the gentleman that had a uh, chokehold yes. and uh, died. I, I remember that. Yes. Um, uh, simple answer, and you admitted it yourself, is just submit. Because when you said it, it, it could have been very bad for you, um, you know, which, which is, you know, uh, it probably is true. It could have been very bad for you. Right. Um, but, but to go ahead and submit means whatever they want it, it may relieve the pressure in most cases it would it would um it, 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 if you notice in the video he did not want to submit whether he was in the right, right. or in the wrong i agree and from that point and from that point on it, it uh if any damage would have been done to him unfortunately he could have fought it and sued the police station. Oh, I agree. Uh, I agree. Listen, make no mistake about it. If Eric Garner complied, complete compliance, if he put his hands up, if he didn't resist arrest, he would probably still be alive today. You know, uh, with that being said, I don't condone what the officer did with the chokehold either. So I think there's two sides to this. But to paint Eric Gardner out as, as a saint, and, you know, it, it, it's just it's, it's not going not gonna, to, uh, it's just not true. It's just not true. Uh, with that being said, I don't think that officer uh, should be on the streets. Oh, okay, but I'm saying in most situations, because there's, there's good apples and bad apples in, sure. in, in, in all society. It doesn't matter the color. But I agree. I, was just I agree. Making a point. No, I agree, I Ron. I agree, Ron, and I appreciate the call. Thank you so much for calling in. 257, five, yeah, sure. 257 5396 is the number to call. Why don't we go to John? John, what's going on? John, go ahead. You're on. Comments. And I agree. Uh, you know, usually it's uh, people kind of rush to judgment and say, okay, this is a racial thing. But if you dig a little deeper, there's always a story behind it. And usually, the person yep. that, yeah. And the person who uh, gets killed or, or hurt badly typically isn't the most, uh, you know, it's not the angel type of person. There's some kind of a back story. Yep. And the, my second comment is uh, it seems like we're kind of teaching our young people to resist and run as opposed to comply. And if there's a problem, you know. Well, then I, you can put in your complaint and, and do it the right way, but you don't resist and run uh, initially um, unless you're looking for trouble or, or you've done something really, really bad. And I, and I think that a lot has to do with the, 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 just the culture, music, uh, the way that the, you know, the, the F the police mentality has been broadcast amongst specific cultures for the last 20, 25 years. And you're right, it hasn't helped that at all. No, I agree, John. Not only that. Not only that, though, I mean, uh, let's say someone does resist and run and they had a shady character and then all of a sudden gets killed. And then, uh, you know, the cop goes to court and there's a settlement and then all of a sudden there's a, a, a big payoff for someone who shouldn't have been killed in the first place and he shouldn't have been doing a bad thing in the first place. Yeah, no, I agree, John. Good good call, my friend. I appreciate that. Good call, John. Two five seven uh, five. Okay. Thank you, John. Two five seven five three nine six is, is the number to call. Let's go to Roberto. Roberto, what's going on? What's up, Roberto? Hey, how are you guys doing today? Good. Doing well. What do you think about this? Check it out. I've always wondered why don't they shoot people with tranquilizers? Like, say they have a knife or sure. something like that. Why don't they do that instead of, like, tasing them or that's killing them? Well, that's a valid point. Well, here's the deal. If somebody is pointing a gun at you, uh, a, a lethal threat, sometimes a tranquil— What happens if the tranquilizer doesn't work? I'll tell you what's well, going to happen. I'm talking about when it's, when it's a knife or something like that. I ain't talking about a gun. Right. I'm talking about like, a knife where the guy's running. But well, if it, okay, well, here's uh, to me those are two different circumstances. Okay, so if somebody is brandishing a knife, 
and they're not complying with a police officer, that's a deadly threat. I, you know, yeah. if, if they don't drop a knife, if, if you're if you're standing 15 feet away and you have yeah. a knife, I, you don't have to be you don't have to shoot you, that person. And, right? Well, exactly. you don't have to kill the guy. Or, or now, if they're right next to you, that's totally different. But if, if they're yeah. in, a, in a reasonable distance, you could shoot, well, or you could shoot them in the leg. Here's the thing, or in the arm, or you know, to, to try to just uh, uh, that. But that's but that's not factually accurate because every officer is never trained to shoot somebody in the arm. Uh, officers are trained to shoot at center mass. That is 100. percent I understand that, that. Is how every officer is trained. But if there's a person with a knife and they're within, and they're 15, 20 feet away from you, how, how big of a threat are they? Gonna, is there, are they going to throw, throw the knife at you? Usually, an officer like will like a ninja star. Usually, an officer will shoot if that person is charging towards the officer, and that officer feels like here's the problem. It's a split second decision. And while I understand where he was coming from, uh, that last caller, and I appreciate the call. Uh, no, I don't think tranquilizer. We're not talking about bears here. We're not talking about monkeys. We're not talking about animals, wild animals. Uh, so it's a completely well, different it, circumstance. But if, if they can, if a horse tranquilizer can can knock out a horse, it can certainly knock out a human, right? It's not going to work. I mean, uh, you know, listen. If, if it's not a deadly I mean, considering threat, ho horses weigh fifteen hundred pounds and never going to happen. E even the biggest humans weigh four hundred. It's never going to happen. Listen, I don't want anyone to be shot and killed. Period. But I'm going to tell you something right now, and then we got to take a break, and we're going to take more of your phone calls. We have a former police officer on the line. I want to get to him. But uh, it's very simple to me. If somebody does not comply with a police officer and they are posing a serious threat, in some cases a deadly threat, I have no problem with an officer shooting at center mass. If it's not a deadly threat and nobody is brandishing a weapon, and they're not assaulting a police officer, then yes, I do believe a taser is the appropriate action. I want to hear from you guys. 257-5396. 702-257-5396. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with all of your phone calls. I'll be waiting on hold. Please wait patiently. We'll be back right after this.